it's here and welcome back in another video uh, in Master Legends. So today I'm gonna discuss another important topic to how to progress easily in the game. Um, and that is um, what monster you should rank up. So I did a video I think yesterday. Uh, I'm, I'm recording this after I recorded the rank up dungeon video so I don't know when I'm gonna release it. I'm pretty sure I will have a one day delay but doesn't matter. Um, in that video, I talked about um, what are the best monsters and the best strategy to go through the rank up dungeon, uh, and of course how to progress into it. So from that, you can tell that there's a lot, there's a relatively easy way to um, rank up your monsters, and one of that, and another question that you should have: which monsters are gonna be uh, as good in the meta progressing? So at the start of the era, we didn't have any good monster. The only good monster, I should say, was for Taster. Um, then Gekon got released and so on. So for now, I'll give you a little bit of a guide of what monster you should invest from the metropol metropolitan monsters who got released from now. So if we look, now we have um, in the metro section... Malfeder, Super Dream, Sapnap, Mr. Not Found, Malarion, Duncanine, uh, Defrataster, Keldrill, Cinturus, Gekon, Aquafine, Hydreka, uh, Decobra, Ryclops, Sigurd and Force. So we already know two others that I will probably talk about in a, di in a video who skill set got, got leaked. And I've gotta be honest, I like them a lot. They are, um, yeah, they're a, a simple type of monster, but I like them. Um, so, let's go to the monster. Malfador is a monster that is basically immune to control a status, status caster and bulwark. Probably not a lot of you got this monster because he's not as good to spend $30 on. Alright? Or 20 euros for in my case. He is um, an attacker that can apply weaknesses um, and deal a lot of damage. But although... He's really powerful, I don't think it will be consistent. So don't buy him, he's not worth it for now. Um, we will probably get a, a way more powerful monster in a while. Oh, what the heck am I saying? We actually got a monster that is better than him as an attacker. But I'm gonna talk about him later. So he's not worth to rank up. Now let's talk about uh, Super Dream. Super Dream is a denier that can stun, apply blindness and daze, and they can apply poison. Um, so, his skill set are mainly nature, he has a, one single target uh, earth attack. And as you can see, a lot of monsters already have the immune to stun. We have him, Decobra, and um, Sapman, who are immune to stun. So, that's pretty much it. He has three monsters that counter him. Ignoring the immune, immune to control, which are at the moment, um, I think, are four immune to control monsters. So yeah, that's pretty much, that talks alone. We have seven monsters in the Metropolitan Era that can counter him. He's not good. Don't invest into him. Uh, unless you're in the rank up dungeon and you need to use him to go through. That might be a use for him. Because yeah, it's relatively... Um, he's powerful in the rank up dungeon, but he really doesn't deserve to, to be ranked up because he won't probably be used both in wars and PvP. So if we go through the next monster is Sapman. Sapman. He's a fire attacker that can apply two total tortures, has extra skills, skills, and one skill that removes 35% um, of, the, of uh, the enemy's life. Listen, this monster is good, alright? He can deal a lot of damage, he has tortures, but uh, don't invest into him anyways, because let me just give you a quick look through his skill set. He's an attacker, right? Look at the damage output. His most powerful skill is not is moderate damage. That should be like the damage that uh, a normal positive effect removal monster should do. Like, it doesn't make sense. So, the next monster is Mr. Unfound. He's a monster that can remove positives singularly, um, remove negatives, yes to skills, and um, 
airplay weaknesses. So, is he good? Well, sort of. He's decent, but probably won't be used anyways. Um, he is good in rank up dungeons, dungeon because he can remove negatives twice. Um, so yeah, that's that's a thing going for him. Then we have Malfader, uh, Malfader, Malarion, which is a uh, Malfader's son. Basically, um, he's an attacker that can give um, give itself a damage boost with an extra gen skill. If you buy him, you will probably get him already to uh, rank three to one thirty. So that's not really a, a need to rank him up. All right, the next monster is Donkeyan. I think that this monster could be quite valuable because no, we don't have any immune to CDA monster, um, and it also can torture, apply Hader with um, to guard down, and we have Spectra that has a uh, AOE guard down. This monster is relatively good just for that. So amazing denier slash support. I like this monster a lot. So you can probably go for this monster, but it's not even that much um, of a worth it. But this monster is another one that again you can go you can go for. So next up we have the taster. He as a difference to the uh, to the other ones is quite good. He has the highest life stat in the game, and although he's the slowest um, of the Metropolitan Monsters, um, he has two AoE attacks, which remove 30% of the um, of the life of the enemy, and also he can apply life regen, stamina regen, heal stamina, heal life. He has so much; it's so hard to take down, and he's also immune to torture and possession if a future possession monsters get get released. So he's quite good in the um, rank up dungeon. He's probably the best monster to run. He can heal you. He, pr he probably he probably won't make you go out the dungeon without um, a bit of damage. The next monster I want to be talking about is uh, Kill Drill. Not good. He deals quite a lot of damage, but he has like an AOE skill that deals quite a lot of damage and has a 50% chance of applying poison. Just apply poison straight away. Why the heck do you have to be? Why do you have to to have a percentage to do it? It doesn't make sense. And we will probably have better monsters in the future if we want a monster that can um, deal damage without having like anticipation or pierce or so on. Then the next monster is Centaurus. He's honestly um, not a bad monster, but I want to say uh, go for him. First of all, because you get him rank rank three if you get him anyways. Then it's good because he has taunt and we'll and we will probably um, obtain dodge area monsters in the in the future. So that's a that's the main thing. He's probably um, if you don't get him, you're not losing anything. The next monster is Jacone. Jacone, as a difference to everyone, he is one of the fastest monsters in the game. And removing only this. He has positive effect removal, zero cooldown, um, an area, which no, uh, apart from our future one, when this monster got released, no other monster um, had uh, AOE positive positive effect removal, uh, apart from the ultimate, op apart from the ultimate, obviously. Um, and probably he will be pretty good in the future. He can also apply guard on hater, uh, taunt hater, He's quite a good monster, so go for him. He's a good monster to go, um, and you know use your cells and nebula on. Okay, I won't say nebula. Nebula, I think you should keep it because um, it's such a scarce resource. Uh, you get a lot less nebula than um, Ladam, so you just want to keep it for a future monster who's gonna be really meta. The next monster is Aquafiend. She's literally Mr. Not Found, but without the weaknesses. So don't go for her. The next monster is Hydraka. Um, he's a powerful um, fire attacker who can deal water, fire damage. He has an extra stun skill. Um, he can apply shields and positive eff effect protection. As a difference to the other monsters, I really think that this monster is quite good. 
you could go for him, but again, he won't be as good in the future. But he's a powerful attacker that, if you want to use him, you can also use him in wars. He's powerful, so you can go for this monster. I'm not saying if you can't go for the others, but um, this is quite a good one, and this is just an advice again. The other monster is the Cobra. She basically applies quick scent, possession, and I think daze. Um, so, no. Basically, not a good monster. Then we have Ryclops. Ryclops is. Uh, we got finally to the good part. The last two monsters of the season were incredible. The last two uh, are from the Bounty Hunt. Um, Ryclops is an immune to control monster. We also has immune to torture for 3 turns and hardened. If that wasn't enough, he has the second highest life stat and one of the highest speed stats. Um, also, he can remove tortures, uh, control and blindness to your allies. And he, can, he has a skill who um, removes positives from one enemy, then deals damage an area, and then removes all positives from all enemies. That's incredible. This this monster is already already has a skill that for the corrupted era we had to wait six seasons to get Xiao Long and Pure Pandalf to have a skill similar like that. So he's really powerful. Go for him. He can also play shields from 30% to 50%. So again, a really powerful monster. A a a really really powerful counter to Absolute Zero. Such as the next one with Sigrid and Ford. Now, for this monster, I've gotta say, he's one of my favorites. So, he is immune to control too, um, he also blocks resurrection and applies applies life regen. He is, if you didn't know it already, uh, a JoJo reference. And looking at the stats, he is not really tanky and, and he's quite slow, but he has a really good power stat. So what he can do basically he has a skill who um, applies a random negative effect to all um, enemies and curse. Then he has a skill that deals moderate damage to one to one enemy, then to all enemies. And that's already a good skill. Uh, not that the others are not good, of course. He deals quite a lot of damage. He can apply random negatives that will mean also control. Which, for an attacker, I've gotta be honest, an immune to control attacker is quite good. He's immune to all control skills, so uh, absolute zero, he counters that. Um, he also can counter uh, resurrection monsters who aren't that much of a deal. But with that random negative effects, you don't know what you can get. You can get tortures that can kill the enemy, uh, since you already applied curse. You can um, obtain like a mega control skill or a control skill. Uh, you can apply blindnesses or skills that aren't that good. But it's just an RG fact and I really like this monster. So I think that this is a monster that you can invest in. He, I don't know if, how meta he will be, but it will definitely be used. Or again, in my opinion, even if he doesn't get used, um, he will be good anyways. So... I think that for now that's it, this is the last um, blessed Metropolitan monster to get released. Um, we also have a skill set for two um, other Metro monsters who are coming out uh, next season, who are Jacksepticeye and, um, and, the, Metro, and the Metro version of um, Cyan Natura. Which uh, Jacksepticeye is not that good, Cyan Natura is good, um, is a bit good, not a really um, a really powerful monster but it's it's a fine monster so i think that for now uh, i can stop this video i already talked as much as i could as i had to and i give you an advice to um i give you an advice on what monster you should really rank up there are a few monsters but really you should wait for the nebula exclusively um you should wait till a greater monster gets released even though we already have a really, really nice monster, um, we can wait. So I don't think I have anything else to say. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe because it will help me out a lot. And I don't have anything else to say. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.